We're going to do something a little bit different today. Normally, I preach a line-on-line exposition of the Scripture, but we've had a number of requests through YouTube and social media for me to talk about how a Sunday megachurch pastor came to the truth of Torah. Seems to be on everybody's mind. How did that happen? And so today I'm going to just share a little bit from my heart, my testimony, um, how the Almighty has led me into this wonderful truth of Torah and how this congregation has transitioned from a Sunday church that, uh, you know, was uh, tracking along with the Roman calendar and the Roman holidays and, and keeping the Roman Sabbath of the first day of the week. It's not the real Sabbath, but the Christian Sabbath. How we transitioned into being followers of Yeshua who walk in His ways. And so I do want to give you some scripture as we begin this time together. I want to start with Revelation chapter 12, beginning with verse 10. It says, And I heard a loud voice saying in the heaven, Now have come the deliverance and the power and the reign of our Elohim and the authority of His Messiah for the accuser of the brothers who accused them before our Elohim day and night has been thrown down. And they, the believers, overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb. Can you say amen? Amen. And because of the word of their witness. Your Bible may say the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. And so there is devil-defeating power in the word of your testimony. Your testimony is the good news of the gospel according to you. In other words, what the Almighty has done in your life, what Elohim has done to bring you through. Amen? Amen. And when you share your testimony, you're sharing the good news according to you, what's happened in your life, what the Almighty has done through Yeshua. And no one can tell your testimony as good as you can. And so telling your testimony is very important. We just finished up 52 weeks of consecutive outreaches and many in our congregation printed out their testimonies on our my story cards and went all over this metroplex passing out their testimony what are they doing overcoming the enemy by the word of their testimony and so some even went on and uh, recorded their testimony and we put it all over social media and so every time somebody clicks play On that video, that's you telling your testimony. That's you overcoming the enemy. That's the good news, according to you, being spread around the world. And that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about what Yeshua has done in my life and in this congregation's life. Also, Psalm 26, beginning with verse 6, says, I wash my hands in innocence, and I walk around your slaughter place or your altar, O Yah, to raise a voice of thanksgiving. You know, Thanksgiving has a voice, and we ought to all be thankful for what he's done in our lives. That's why we tell our testimony, to raise a voice of thanksgiving and to declare all your wonders. And so people ask me all the time, they they want to know, what Damascus Road encounter did you have? What special transformative event transpired in your life? to lead you from being a Sunday megachurch pastor to being someone who follows in the ways of Yeshua and who loves Torah. And my answer to that is there's really not one specific event that transpired, but a whole host of events that have taken place over about two decades. And when I think about it, I think about how the Almighty leads us, how He takes us on a journey See, we're not where we want to be, but thank y'all we're not where we used to be. We need to keep moving, amen? We need to keep following his leadership. And when I look back on my life, I see a number of events that transpired that led me to this place where I am today, loving Yeshua with all my heart, walking in his ways, embracing Torah, having my life being defined by all of Scripture, not just a little sliver in the back of the book, but the entire Bible, amen, a number of events that transpire. And I see the Almighty's hand. What he'll do is 
He'll allow you to experience a lot of things. And it's those experiences in your life that make you. See, to make the ministry, the man or the woman must first be made. And so when I think about all the things that I've experienced in my past, 30 years in the ministry, by the way, not one thing was wasted. Not one experience that I went through was wasted. Nothing was, quote, bad. He used it all to develop who I am now. I have a very unique perspective. I was able to serve under a man with tremendous influence in the body of Christ. Uh, This man was able to build one of the largest, if not the largest, independent charismatic congregations in America, if not the world. And I served there for over a decade. I learned a lot there. And I walked with a lot of, of men of great influence. So I learned a lot of things. And I was able to minister before tens of thousands of people. That's what's very unique about my perspective and the platform the Almighty has given me now. Because people know who I am through my association with other ministers and other congregations. So I have 5,000 friends on Facebook and more than one page. And we have an opportunity because people wonder, whatever happened? to G. Stephen Simons, or they called me Pastor Gary. Whatever happened to Pastor Gary? What's he doing now? So they go on my Facebook page, and it's all about Yeshua and Torah. (laughs) People want to know, what's going on with this guy? You know, has he fallen off the planet? What's he doing now, right? So they go to my YouTube page, and they see all of our sermons. We produce sermons every week, and they go all around the world, over 160 nations of the world. And so the platform the Almighty has given me is a very unique platform. And uh, most of my ministry friends, I I have scores of ministry friends. They're all still in Sunday church. And and they wonder from time to time, whatever happened to Pastor Gary? And so it's my prayer that they allow that, you know, inquiring mind to get the best of them and come seek out what happened to Pastor Gary. And also come across the truth of Torah. Amen? Amen. So I want to talk about some of the events that are on that journey that's led me here. And and I want to start with the most recent event. And then I want to rewind about 20 years. Okay, so the most recent event is that I had the great joy and opportunity to take a special group of people to the land of Israel. Eretz Israel. Just recently, a few weeks ago. And the greatest joy of that was that I was able to take my daughter, Christiana. She's my oldest. She'd never been to Israel. And it was a beautiful thing to be able to walk in the footsteps of Yeshua with her and for her to experience the land. Now when she reads the Bible, she'll never have to use her imagination about what it looks like because she's been there. Amen. And she's got these big, beautiful, vivid pictures of of what the land of the Bible looks like. It it was a wonderful experience. And I had several others of my... uh, extended family who were with me and we had a tremendous time and a tremendous opportunity to speak to some significant orthodox Jews while we were there and open up a dialogue it was a beautiful thing Um, we are an anomaly to the orthodox we wear seat seats and we we uh, keep the dietary uh, commandments we we worship on uh, Shabbat and we keep the biblical feast you know and they're just looking at us and wondering what kind of animal are you (laughs) and I had one brother tell me uh, one Orthodox Jew tell me, you're welcome at my Shabbos table anytime. Now, that's a, that's a huge compliment. Yeah. Amen. And so uh, the Almighty's up to something. There's dialogue that's being generated between those of us who love Yeshua, but who also love Torah, and the Orthodox Jews who, who have been taught all their life that, that Yeshua uh, is not the Messiah. And so we're just... Uh, So thrilled to have that opportunity. One of the things that transpired on that trip, and I like to take all of the...